In week two, we will focus on integrated groups. The guiding question is, what is the unique nature of teaching and learning in groups where some students are fluent in the language of instruction and others are not? During last week, you were introduced to the idea that in multilingual settings there are three different groups that can be formed in relation to language proficiency. They are first or primary language groups, second language groups, and integrated groups, composed of first and second language learners of the language of instruction. Each supports the development of academic bilingualism, but there are limitations as well. This week we will examine integrated groups, also referred to as linguistically heterogeneous groups. In every setting, students need to be able to talk about, interact with, act on, read about, write about, and connect to important ideas. If you think back to the analysis you did of your own classroom or school schedule, it is likely that both you and your students spend most of the instructional day in linguistically integrated groups. You may not think about this linguistic diversity as you plan. Given that it is the most common setting, it is especially important to understand both the opportunities and limitations for students from all language backgrounds when working together during the school day. While an integrated group is the most common setting, it is also the most difficult to teach well to meet the needs of all students. Integrated or linguistically mixed groups are the most challenging for teachers because instruction must be both comprehensible to the second language learners and sufficiently demanding for the native speakers. Heterogeneous language groups can provide second language learners with many opportunities for authentic communication in English, not available in other settings. Usually integrated groups are taught as if all students were native speakers of the language of instruction, which is often viewed as best practices. There are positive things that can result from this approach. First of all, the instruction is typically focused on the most important concepts of the curriculum and pitched to the language levels of the fluent speakers, keeping expectations high. In integrated groups, native speakers of the language of instruction can act as models for second language learners by showing how they represent their knowledge about the concepts of the instruction, either orally or in writing. In addition, given that native and second language speakers of a language usually come from different cultural backgrounds, integrated groups potentially provide many opportunities for developing intercultural competence. When instruction is planned with intercultural competence in mind, all students can have experiences which help them get along with, learn from, and respect people who are different from themselves. The limitations of integrated groups are in some ways the same as the opportunities. The delivery of grade level content geared to skills and abilities and language levels of native speakers. If teachers use strategies geared mainly to the needs of the native speakers of English, some aspects of the instruction may be beyond the grasp of even advanced second language learners. Lecturing to the whole group, while the most common approach, is the least effective instructional strategy, especially for second language speakers. The group that is least proficient may be left out completely. When most of the group is actively participating, teachers may be reluctant to slow down or stop to explain concepts and vocabulary in depth to a small group of students or re even realize that they need to do so. Even when second language learners can understand their lessons in the heterogeneous group, their attempts to speak English are frequently thwarted by more proficient native English speakers. Native English speakers easily outcompete them for the floor in whole group question and answer sessions and discussion groups. In addition, if second language learners are always in a group with native speakers, they won't get the extra practice with vocabulary, sentence structures, and meaning that they need to develop academic language proficiency. The flip side is that if teachers adjust their instruction to meet the needs of L2 learners, there's a chance that the L1 speakers will get bored or perceive that the instruction is too easy. Instruction in integrated groups should reflect understandings of sound second language instruction while maintaining 
high expectations for performance. It is a time to allow students to work together across language proficiencies to interact with and act on the big ideas and enduring understandings of the topics of instruction. These can include sheltering strategies such as sentence frames and visual support. Communication of ideas and knowledge. Grammatical accuracy is less important. Integrated groups are most successful when activities are hands-on, interactive, and address multiple modalities – auditory, visual, kinesthetic. This includes things like shared and buddy reading, project-based activities, lab experiments, and small group problem-solving. Use a variety of materials. Integrated group is the time when it is most valuable to have related to key concepts and understandings. Students need to learn at a range of reading levels so that everyone can be working on the concepts at their own level of language proficiency and literacy development. This promotes independent choice and, by including materials in languages other than English, you support students in connecting their learning across languages in school and at home. Cooperative learning strategies are ideally suited for integrated groups as they involve every student in the learning while building social and academic skills, as well as intercultural competence. During week five, we will return to integrated groups and go more deeply into specific strategies for cooperative learning and their uses and benefits in a linguistically diverse classroom. Remember that a main takeaway from this module is that no one grouping is sufficient if all students are going to succeed. The next two weeks of the module will focus on second language and primary language groups.